I'm speaking with uh, composer David Buckley, who is one of my personal favorite uh, composers. His work can be heard in films like The Forbidden Kingdom, Blood Creek, From Paris with Love, Trespass, and Gone. Uh, David co-composed The Town with Harry Gregson Williams. He also composes the score for the Emmy-winning series The Good Wife on CBS. Earlier this year, he scored Parker, directed by Taylor Hackford, as well as the TV film uh, Killing Lincoln, which was produced by Ridley and Tony Scott. Uh, narrated by Tom Hanks, and his most recent score is Call of Duty Ghosts, which is the newest installment in Activision's billion-dollar franchise. The game, which was just released, uh, sold over $1 billion worth of copies uh, worldwide to retailers on its first day of release. The consumer gross numbers, I'm sure, are going to be way up there as well. David, thanks so much for uh, talking today. Oh, pleasure. Lovely to talk to you again. So this is a... This is actually our fifth interview together, and now you are the most interviewed composer on uh, Film Music Media. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, my God. And therefore, probably the most boring. <laughs> I'll try and, I'll try and get, find something new to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, have a, we always have a lot to talk about. And so, um, so let's jump right into to Call of Duty. That's the big news. Uh, and yeah. I didn't know you were scoring it just literally till I guess, a, a few days ago when I emailed you. And... Uh, I heard from uh, from Stefan, who runs uh, the Hans dot com, and he's like, "Oh yeah, David's scoring it." And I was like, "Wow!" And uh, I I heard the score. I really loved it. I mean, the franchise is ginormous. It's a musical. Uh, the musical talents behind it, you know, from Michael Giacchino, Graham Revell, Joel Goldsmith, Stephen Barton, Harry, Lauren Hans, Sean Murray, Brian Tyler. It's a huge list. Jack Wall. I mean, quite a legacy to to be included in, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's um. <clears throat> It's interesting that um, it's interesting you say that you didn't know about it. It's been slightly tantalizing for me because I finished working on the game. Well, more to the point, I started sort of negotiations started back in January mm-hmm. uh, when I first started talking to developers, um, and then I think we completed it around August. But <coughs> I was on a fairly strict um, <coughs> sort of there was a I wouldn't say it was completely forbidden for for anything to be said, but I think they wanted to wait until various sort of release packets of information were happening. And for one one way or another, until I think really the eve of the, the, the release of the game on the 4th, it was pretty subdued, my, my involvement, which was slightly frustrating because I wanted to sort of let a few people know. Right. Um, <laughs> but yes, you know, I was well aware during the process, even, you know, when I was first pitching for the job, that it was, uh, you know, there was a, a quite an illustrious list of composers who've uh, <clears throat> scored these games before me. So it did, it did feel, you know, I felt very honored to be, to be a part of uh, that, that long, long list and impressive list. Right, right. And so this isn't your first video game, but it's sort of uh, kind of the first big action game you've, you've done. And uh, so how did you get involved with this project? Because I feel like something like Call of Duty is, you know, a composer's dream. It's such a huge platform. So many ears are going to get to this game, and it's a huge canvas kind of creatively to work on. So how did you get involved? Right. Well, I mean, I have I have scored one game for Activision f- before, a completely different animal, um, the a, a Shrek right. video game, the, right. the, the the last one, in fact. Um, so I, you know, I had some, you know, I knew the guys at Activision or, or some people there, so I, I was a known name to them. But um, initially, there was talk of perhaps uh, <clears throat> Harry and, and I scoring the game together. Mm-hmm. That had come up as, as a suggestion, but timing wise with Harry, he 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 wasn't able to to commit. So um, I sort of there was continuing talks whether I you know might be a suitable candidate to do it on my own, and there was you know some competition. It wasn't just you know here's I the bet. game. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of but, people uh, clawing, clawing for that. Yeah, I mean I I know a few names. I'm sure there were more that I didn't know about. But it, yes, it, you're right. It's it's a it's a sought after franchise, and um, you know yeah, it's it's a it's a big deal getting something like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was a case like with many things, uh, meetings and having discussions about where they want the music to go, where I would like the music to go. Um, and then eventually we, we, we all seemed to sort of think this would be a good idea and, and, and a deal was made. Well, it's great. I'm glad, I'm glad it happened that way because it's a fantastic full bodied you know, experience. And, uh, what, so what, what, what is the appeal, I guess, of a video game to you as a composer? What about the project, uh, spoke to you musically? Like when you're thinking musically about it, what really kind of spoke to you? Well, in our initial chats with the, my initial chats with the developers on this game, we had spoken about how this was going, how the, their vision 
up front was just to be a very dark and very electronic score, almost n- not no interest in orchestra. That was the <clears throat> initial thought. Mm-hmm. But along the way, w- we actually settled on having quite a significant influx of, of orchestral uh, scoring in there. Right, um, right. A big brass section, big strings. And, you know, that, that the fact that it... I mean, you know, I would have been happy either way because I, I really like the developers and you can there's more than one way to do these things. But I was actually glad that the, that the emphasis did change to having a bit more of a... I mean, when I say orchestral, I mean, it's, not, it's not sort of symphonic in a mm-hmm. John Williams sense. I mean, it's still... You know, this is still modern scoring where the orchestra's operating in a certain stylized kind of way. Right. Um, you know, it's not sort of overly florid or... <clears throat> Or try to be too clever for its own good, um, but you know, having the forces available to me to to to, to play stuff on six French horns, you know, big melodies on that was was nice because some of the scoring thrillers I've done recently have been some of them have been somewhat subtle, um, mm-hmm. and so to to have the opportunity to have a have a theme and to have a you know development over the pieces. Over the, over the, well, I think it was about three hours of music I wrote all in all. Wow. It was, um, <clears throat> it was, you know, it was something I felt I could really grab, grab onto. And we didn't lose, I mean, there's definitely a lot of electronic stuff in there. I mean, the soundtrack reflects, you know, a mixture of, of the electronic music and the orchestral side and the, the hybrid of the two. But there's a lot of dark ambient music within the game itself, which I didn't include on the soundtrack because it doesn't necessarily. Right stand up to, to, to listen to by itself. But, um, you know, so we did keep that vision of, of keeping it dark and electronic. We never swayed from the dark, really. There are very few moments of pure major key bliss. I mean, there are a couple of moments of, of respite. Um, but I, I think it was, for me, what, what, what appealed was the fact that the developers were very keen to get my input and things. It wasn't, they weren't just telling me what to do. Right. They wanted to know how, how I wanted to approach a, a different part of the game. And the fact that, that we could go big when necessary, we could go small when, when necessary. It just seemed to tick many boxes for me. So it was, it was, it was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And that's what I noticed most about the music is, is that, you know, the, the other scores, which I love just as much, you know, they're, they're very bombastic, they're very huge, and there's so many in your music so many quiet moments that really kind of made the bigger the big action sets even more i guess you know the 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 way you built them it was just i loved it just the way the the way you structured everything i think there was more quiet as much quiet moments as there were big moments and they kind of really lent to the intensity of the game right well i you know i think some of this is also i had a couple of people helping put the soundtrack cd together Mm -hmm. um just people who music editors mixes people who had a perspective on these things because you know there, there is a, a hell of a lot of action music in the game and yeah, there's yeah. also a lot of tension cues and it's it, it, this was perhaps a challenge more than any other soundtrack i put together because i had more way more material than there's no way i was going to release two cds of this right. so i knew i had to get it down to one and then it was a, a challenge you know how do i put that together because um <clears throat> i want to try and give a story but i'm i'm condensing music in a, in a significant way um and also the nature of, as I'm sure you know from talking to other video game composers, the nature of certainly the way this game, the music is written for this game, one piece of music tends to cover one specific mood, and you don't can't really change that mood. So if you're writing a an, an action piece, mm-hmm. there's no real incentive to suddenly do a left turn and go very quiet within that cue. You've got to kind of keep the um, the intensity going. Otherwise, if a player's midst battle and and you musically pull out you know the 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 energy that you've level that you've been at it's going to be very disconcerting for the player right so that so that means that each cue is is really living in its own world in terms of energy and drama so it did mean that there were quite a lot of <clears throat> questions as to how one orders it how does one create a sequence that's still pleasing so I, you know how it works in the game is one thing, and how it works on CD is another thing. But certainly, I've never had to put as much thought into the game um, sequence as I ha- as as, in, as I have in any other project before. Right, and because and I, I was, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, and I, you know, and I was aware that we needed these moments. You know, I wanted to have, I wanted to bring the energy up. I wanted, I wanted us to feel that, you know, battle. We're in the midst of it, but then subside and then come down to something c- calm and small. 
and use just use I mean, fairly obvious contours, you know, ups and downs, but use use them to my own advantage rather than just hitting people over the head with action all the time. I think yeah, that's exactly how I took it. It wasn't uh, overbearing. It wasn't. It didn't like kind of uh, onslaught the listener and uh, and but the the game. I mean, the game process. I guess working on a video game for you as a composer. I mean, it was when do you come into this whole thing? I mean. The game was, you know, it was written by an Oscar-winning writer, Stephen Gagan. So, you, did right. you did you read the script? Did you uh, jump into when, when you had concept art? Did you wait till there was a beta version? Like, when do you start writing music, and what do you kind of write to? Well, I, I'm sure it differs from game to game. I mean, my, with, with this game, um, they would. I think I came in significantly late because I don't. I forget how long these things are in development, but they thought yeah, so the, a few the years. Yeah. yeah, probably. I think I had three. So I, I guess I am relatively late, although still by film terms, being on a project for five months as I was, I think in the end, that's that's a that's quite a luxury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> although having said which, that's three hours of music in five months, which is doesn't right. feel so luxurious. But <clears throat> I would there was a lot of concept art, as you say. I mean, they sent me images of things that would set the the tone. Um, I had meetings with with the developers and with Steve, the the, the guy who who wrote the script. That I don't actually think I ever saw a script. Um, no, I didn't. But I, you know, whatever info they had, I would I would absorb, and I, I'd go and see them quite regularly actually. And they they were seem very appreciative of the fact that I wanted to hang out with them, not just because they also like English pubs, which we discovered <laughs> as a mutual interest, but because um, it was just important to to sort of know how their minds worked, how they operated, how they saw the the vision, and it and it was very much something that was going to come together at, at, at the 11th hour, really. I mean, right. we're all, it's not, no one was delaying the process, but you had to sort of put a lot of faith in each other's abilities. And we would talk a lot and I'd, and I'd be doing stuff and, and there'd be a lot of like, yeah, I think this is going to be great. But it was, it was only at the, really, it was only at the very, very end when they said, it works, it's good. <laughs> and I thought, phew, because if it doesn't, there's some serious, serious <laughs> problems about the, to happen. So it, it was a very interesting process, but I can honestly say it was a, you know, a true collaboration and, and a lot of respect seemed to go each way between them and me. I, I, mean, I would imagine that because you would have to, yeah, you'd have to have a lot of trust, I think, with everybody because, because you're not, it's not a film, you're not scoring to a fixed picture. So are they in, at times kind of building sequences and levels around your music and kind of, kind of placing it? Because you, you, you probably don't know exactly how they're going to end up, yeah, right, using your music in the end, right? Right, exactly. I mean, and that's that's a that's a challenge. I mean, I had a it was a much smaller deal on on the Shrek game I did, but it was I noticed it there, um, and I noticed it big time here. And and it's it's a little disconcerting, I think, for someone who's so uh, it, you know someone like me who's so used to scoring to picture, and that's mm-hmm. my impetus to change. That's my impetus to go quiet is, is or go loud is because there's something triggered by what I see on screen. Um, not having those um, key defining moments, almost it provides you a structure in, in a movie. You have a you, you have a structure handed to you. You have to decide how you how you put the clothes on on the on that skeleton. Um, but I did at times feel a bit. I thought, my like, God, you know, I've got to write three minutes of action. And I've got nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. I've, when do, why do I? It's going to get boring. I need to find a reason to change. But how do I change? And and then how's it going to work? Is it going to be covered by this helicopter sound or by this ammunition? So <clears throat> some of it is just down to chance and luck. Um, but they do capture gameplay along the way. So um, if I'm in a certain part, one of the levels of the game, they will send me a video of someone playing it. And at least I have, it, it gets me as close as possible to my comfort level of scoring a film as, as you can in the video game world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do put it out there partly because I want to hear what the sound effects are like. Well, they, they're probably temp at that point, but I, right. I just want to have a notion of is it really gun heavy? Sometimes, you know, there were some scenes they'd send me and there was a huge amount of ammunition. I checked them and I said, is it going to be something like that in the final? And they said, yeah, you know, so you better keep out of this certain range and, or if you can really sort of overdrive or distort this thing, then we know that will cut through. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's in that sense, it's not dissimilar from a film that you, until you get to the final playback and mix, you don't, you're not 100 percent sure everything's going to work. But there is, of course, that level of, of of chance and luck in a video game that 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 makes it a sort of unique musical uh, experience. Mm-hmm. 
and as a and, and a scary one. <laughs> and as a as a narrative too, it's a very different thing, especially a first person shooter. It's a very specific uh, format. The way the player plays, the way the story unfolds through kind of just a point of view, and then you have you know the, the gun in the bottom right hand of the, hand of the corner. So how do you emotionally engage a player in a game like this? What kinds of emotions or tones were you going for musically? Because they're they're kind of you had these kind of big swells, especially during the end and the kind of the opening, the kind of that that your main theme that really kind of echoed a bit of a deeper kind of emotional resonance in there. Well yeah, I mean this actually this is this is part of the first conversation that I had with the developers that they wanted a theme and you know then when you when someone says they want a theme you have to discuss really what they mean by theme because that doesn't necessarily mean a melody. It could mean a little rhythmic pattern. It could mm-hmm. mean just an, even an instrument. So there's a lot of interpretation as what a theme means. But they, they did want a melody. Um, and their, their notion was they wanted something heroic, but not a sort of triumphant heroicism. There was a, <clears throat> a sadness to it, a sort of melancholy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this sounds a bit pretentious of me now, what I'm about to say, but <laughs> my, the, my theme has this um, little, it's, it's not a complicated theme, but I was quite pleased with the fact that it, it keeps trying to rise, but then fall. So I, I'll, <clears throat> I'm, actually, I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment, so it may actually make my voice sound passable or, or not at all. But it, <laughs> you start with... Da-da-dum. So every time that the theme gets a little bit higher, it falls again, and that was a that was a, a sort of I don't maybe it's probably under the surface, probably no one would really care or notice, but maybe in the recess of our mind we do feel a sense of moving forward, but at the end of the day, there is no victory, there is no glory. Um, and that was a big emotional part of the whole game that we were never, it, was no, it wasn't ever supposed to be a overly sort of, I can't think of who does sort of big warfare. I mean, not, not supposed to be sort of Jerry Bruckheimer-ish. It was supposed right. to keep, to keep some, I mean, the tune is, a, you know, it, it, some may argue, I think I read on some forum somewhere, someone said, someone had commented that it's, it, it's too, that the, 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 the music was too, I can't remember the exact turn of phrase. They wanted something more sort of real to modern warfare. Right. But I think, you know, this is entertainment that we're making here. And, and a theme, this, I, I, there have been many projects where I haven't been able to use a, a melodic theme. It just wouldn't have made sense. But I think in the context of epic, broken vistas, war-torn um, <clears throat> landscapes, it seems like a, a melody like this can be used in a, in a large context orchestrally, or sometimes I just had it on one instrument. And no, but and what you're saying about it is, I've I've already written my review for the, for the album, and that's exactly what I I picked up is that it has, a, a touch of heroism, uh, but it's very somber and it doesn't, it never reaches a point of like patriotism or kind of overbearing kind of melodramatic overtones. So, it definitely... right there was a, you're right you're right, and in fact there was one cue I wrote, it, um. I can't remember where it was, somewhere quite near the end of the game, and it, it was a victory moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did go, I went to that place, and I kind of knew as I was writing it that I had, I had these quite traditional military snares and majorish chords, and, and it, was, it was bizarrely optimistic. I mean, in isolation, it worked. And if I played it to someone, they'd probably think, oh, that's quite nice. But I knew in the context of the game, it was... It, it had just crossed the line right. um, into being not what the game was. And I, I sent it to them just out of curiosity because I, I, it's good to sometimes, even if you, it's good to hear it from someone else that something isn't quite right, just to confirm your own suspicions. And yeah, we all agreed that nice piece of music, but it's, it's not, it's just not <laughs> right for the game. So um, yeah, it, it was, it was a, that was the, the sort of first task that I had. It was setting the tone, creating this ghost theme which is that it, it, it taps into a lot of the things that we'd expect. There is, a, there is a line, a melody that you could hum. It does have some sense of, of hero, heroicism, but it's not um, patriotic and, and, and it's not uh, triumphant. But it's, right. still, I, it's sober, it's somber, and it ultimately it falls. It, it doesn't ever end on a high note, it ends on a low note. No, it's a it's a fantastic experience. I think it was. I mean, I've loved 
I love everybody who's done scores for this series, and it's just your your entry is definitely it feels you, and it feels uh, perfect in the sense of everything that that the game is. And uh, I can't wait. I haven't played it yet. I can't wait. To, I'm I'm gonna be picking up a PlayStation Four on the fifteenth, so I'll definitely. Oh wow! Right. I'll be getting it for that system, so I can't wait. <laughs> um, right. But uh, just looking ahead of what you have coming up, I saw you have a movie called A Bit of Bad Luck coming up, a, a comedy. I guess a nice change of pace. Yeah. Right. Um. I did that, uh, God, I can't remember what I did. I think it was the beginning of this year, but maybe it was the end of last. But that was a very fun little project for me. I've never done anything, I've never done a comedy film before. I've mm -hmm. written comedy music or, well, actually, I've written some music that I thought was serious, but other people think were comic. But, <laughs> uh, um, but this was, um, uh, it's a little, sweet little film, not, not too long, not too involved. It was about 25 minutes of music, which is a, stark contrast to uh, the, the three hours <laughs> Call of Duty. And um, yeah, I wanted to take it on just because it was something I hadn't really done before. There were very small forces, just guitars and little plucked instruments. And um, so that was a real fun thing to do. Um, and um, it's always, I think I've probably mentioned to you in the past that, you know, rather like two heroes of mine, Harry and, and John, they're, um, you know, so lucky necker is to jump between um comedy and silly things with fluffy animals and then doing hard-hitting action so right. but keeping my options open, you know if there is an opportunity to do a, a comedy like that it was it was important for me to take it just to, to flex muscles that might otherwise be a bit blabby yeah i could see yeah well, I'm, uh, I can't wait. Uh, can't wait to hear it um, because it'll uh, definitely be interesting to see your voice in a, in a new direction. But, uh, uh, but c thank you so much, uh, David, for your time today and for talking again. And congratulations on Call of Duty. It's, I mean, breaking records as usual as it does. So, and to have your music on that big of a of a stage. So, congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And I have to say, rather, rather like you saying that you're you're going to pick up a game soon and play it. I, right. that's the one thing that will actually. You said, "Did I read a script?" The answer is no. I think the only way, really, I'm going to know how this, how it all comes together, is by playing the game. And I'm, I'm somewhat hindered by the fact that I'm a hopeless gamer. <laughs> it doesn't come to me at all naturally. So um, I, I need to need to pick up my copy and get practicing. So we can compare notes. Well, you'll probably complete it in a matter of days, and I'll I'll give you a call in a couple of months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, great. Well, thank you so much for for talking today. And uh... pleasure.